So Javante, he revealed that he signed a seven fight new deal with Amazon Prime worth over 200 million. Now we just talking about the guarantee money. We not even talking about pay-per-view. That's the top of bag Tank is getting as the face of boxing. I can honestly say roughly the seven fights are gonna take Tank three years at least to complete. He has exciting fights on the table with the likes of Devin Haney, Shakur, Lomachenko, William Zabeda, Tiafama Lopez, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Which with these names I just dropped, Tank can easily make probably a billion in the sport of boxing as long he wins and he can execute delivering these fights to the fans. However, you have to save the best for last. I never thought I'd see the day where I'm even thinking about a Javante versus Kermel Moten type of fight. Well, the way Javante has been dissing and going at Kermel Moten, who's obviously Floyd Mill the prodigy, Kermel Moten is like Floyd Mill the new baby right now. This fight is now more realistic than ever. Three years from now, possibly Tank last fight on Amazon Prime. Obviously, Kermel Moten just turned 18 like yesterday, but with his top of talent, he can be ready three to five years from now. I truly believe once Kermel Moten is 23, he's gonna be ready to fight anybody in the world. We all know Tank is that guy, but you best believe Kermel Moten is him as well. Right now, Kermel Moten fights at 126 and 130, so five years from now, Kermel Moten can easily fight at 135 or even perhaps 140. Only time will tell. Nevertheless, the reason why I'm talking about Tank versus Kermel Moten, two fighters on two different stages of their careers at the moment in time, is due to the fact Tank is not looking at Kermel like a fighter or a prospect on the come up that has the potential to be the next pound for pound king, the next face of boxing. He's looking at him more so as a rival, as an enemy that's trying to take his throne. We all know Tank has the face of boxing crown, not necessarily pound for pound number one in the world. That's Crawford. But as far as the face of boxing, Tank has the crown. Tank is beefing with Floyd for whatever reason. And obviously, Kermel Moten is Floyd now with a prodigy. So Floyd is trying to put Kermel Moten on. That's his new next superstar. Due to that, Kermel Moten some way somehow entered the beef. Javante ended up blocking Kermel Moten from fighting on his undercard. Kermel Moten originally was supposed to fight on Canelo versus Munguia undercard, but according to Kermel Moten, he suffered an injury, so they delayed his comeback to June 15th on Tank versus Frank Martin undercard. However, Tank ended up removing him from his card, from his event. Since he's beefing with Floyd, and obviously, Kermel Moten is associated with Floyd. So, Javante wants no part of that. Originally, Javante told Kermel Moten, Yo ass won't be on June 15th card either. So, Tank completely blocked Kermel Moten from fighting on his card. When a fan asked Kermel Moten that, Kermel said, quote, I got something else coming up. Stay tuned. Salute. Well, Tank ended up clapping at Kermel by saying, quote, Next time, be a man of your own, little clown-ass ninja. Don't forget the reason why you throwing up that ape shit. End of the quote. This is why I'm talking about them fighting already. The way Tank is talking, he's talking to Kermel like he's Devin, like he's Shakur. Like he want to fight him, basically. He's not talking to Kermel like he's that young kid that he used to see in the gym. I know Kermel has a lot of respect for Tank. He looks up to Tank. But on Tank's side, there's a whole lot of love lost and no love found for Kermel Moten. But that's the type of business they in. That's the nature of the beast. Due to that, the best way to solve this in the near future is by them fighting each other. Tank was throwing shots at Kamel Moten for using the ape sign. I always found it cool how Kamel Moten is using the white ape and Javante is using obviously the original ape. 
if they do end up fighting each other, this is going to be the fight between Floyd Mayweather the prodigies. Is it going to be the passing of the torch or will the torch remain? Only time will tell. At the moment in time, me personally, I think the timing is off. I don't like how Javante is going at Kermel Moten. I understand why he's doing it, but I don't like the way he's going about it just because Kermel is associated with Floyd. Kermel has nothing to do with this. He's too young for all of this. He's only 18, building his career. Him and Tank may never fight, as far as I know. So it's strange to see Tank diss Kermel instead of help Kermel, especially when Tank complains about other OG fighters that don't help the young bucks on the come up. Tank said he's going to be doing it. Well, he got to show us. So far, all we see is him dissing people on the come up. Now, it's one thing if Tank and Kermel are actually going to fight in the near future and capitalize on all of this. But if they don't, then they need to go ahead and squash the beef. I was really looking forward to watching Kermel Moten fight on Tank versus Frank Martin undercard. A lot of people were. It's not just me. So I know a lot of people are going to be disappointed that Tank blocked Kermel from fighting on his undercard. Nevertheless, Tank versus Frank Martin entire card is still going to be fire. I think with Kamel Moten having all of this hype, he would have had the flame be even bigger. Now we got to wait on his next move on his next fight day. With that being said, go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below. And to be continue on the next episode of Akhi TV. Peace out. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See what the future holds for you. So, uh, who who are some of the people that you spar with that the public might know of? Uh, a lot of big names out there. I've uh, I worked with Tank. I worked with Shakur. I worked with Robisi Ramirez, uh, Shushu, Keyshawn, Keyshawn Davis. Uh, I worked with well, I worked with Duke Reagan, and uh, I just recently worked with uh, a dude from Japan. He won the world as an amateur. I forgot his, how to pronounce his name, but he's one of the main spar partners for the monster. And they told me that him and the monster are like head to head, almost okay. evenly matched, and uh, yeah, it was real good work. Well, let me single a couple of fighters out. How was it sparring against uh, Tank Davis and Shakur Stevens? Uh, yeah, it was great. I learned a lot with them, you know, and uh, it definitely gave me a lot of confidence seeing that uh, I was in there hanging with them at the age that I was and uh, as an amateur. And I feel like that gave me a lot of confidence, especially going into the pros, because them is the best guys out right now. And I, I'm able to hang in there with them when I was 16, 15, so, you know. Yeah, that's impressive. Ready. That's impressive. What, what did, uh, if anything, what did Javante Davis and Shakur tell you after they sparred you? Like, what what, what, what advice did they give you? Uh, Shakur, he, he, uh, he had told me that I'm one of his favorite amateur fighters and that uh, I got a lot of skills. I could, uh, I could beat a lot of pros, like that's like champions or prospects right now. I could beat them, and uh, when he told me that, that that definitely gave me a lot of confidence too, because I know he's been in there with a lot of them guys. He's fought them, he sparred all of them, and, and so he knows. Man, so yeah. Can you describe the difference between the two, the two as far as tanking, sparring tank and Shakur? What, what was the difference between them? What makes them unique in your in your eyes and your experience? Because a lot of people haven't been in the ring with them before. Uh, yeah, it's, it's two totally different paces. Uh, Shakur is more like a constant pace. He takes his time, but he's always like in your face, putting his range finder out there. Tank, he more he move around more and he wait and he explode with shots. He likes to fight in uh, spurts. So it's it's different, but it's all it's all good work. It's all learning experience, and this helps me get better. Well, let me ask you: out of Devin Haney, Shakur Stevens, and Javante Davis, who is it that you going that you think is going to come out on top out of that out of that whole mix? Uh, it's hard to say. All them guys are really skilled. I feel like as of right now, the two I mean the the best. Out of them three, I'd have to say it's between Tank and Shakur. They, uh, I feel like, like Shakur said at the end, it's gonna be them two. They gonna run through everybody else, and it's gonna be them two at the end. So I feel like that's how it's gonna go. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be great. Lastly, if if Crawford switching gears, if Crawford moves up three weight divisions to fight 
Canelo. Who would you favor in that fight? Uh, I favor, I favor Crawford. But I feel uh, Crawford, he has the boxing ability to beat Canelo. Canelo will probably be the, he'll be the bigger guy and uh, stronger based on weight. And uh, but Crawford has the skill and just the footwork to be able to beat Canelo boxing, set him up for counters. So let everybody know when you when exactly 